Let's go get him again. This one right here, just another solid addition to the Alto Parisi lineup. This is my third bottle of the brand. And now I'm looking at my fourth offering off the strength of the previous three, including this one. They are that good to my nose. I think it's time to pop this one. Let's go. Fragrance family, welcome to the Robes 08 channel. I'm your host, Mark. This series of Pop the Cherries where I pop the cork on a full bottle purchase, this one right here, and give you my initial thoughts. I wore this scent on my skin as my scent of the day for a few days, including today, to just give me a good grasp of the scent before it goes into the vault for a full-fledged review. Now it's time to give you my thoughts before it goes into that vault on Bocanera by Alto Parisi. Now, if you're new here, thanks for watching. Hey, subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm also all over social media under my YouTube handle, Robes08. You can keep tabs on me on some behind the scenes stuff, including Santa of the Day, new purchases, and what I'm working on for this channel. Now, if you have a Facebook account, yeah, you can follow me, but you can also join us on Fragrance Guru Nation, which is my Facebook group uh, where we discuss fragrances. Uh, you'll be uh, you'll be notified of new releases. People buy, sell, swap uh, fragrances, so you can get some stuff on the cheap. And uh, obviously, just a great place to hang out if you're a frag head like myself. So now on to the meat and potatoes of the video. We're going to talk about Bocanetta from the House of Orto Parisi. This is my third dip in the brand and I'm not stopping. This one is strong, just like the other two that I absolutely love from the brand. So let's go in under the hood with Bocanera. Now the release date was back in 2014, so I'm a little late on this one. The nose behind this, of course, Alessandro Galtieri, crazy nose, and the major notes to my nose, as you know, Alto Parisi, Nassomaro, they don't publish notes, but uh, I like to play some fun and games here. Let's take a look at the notes that I think are major in this one. Sandalwood would have to be one, Oud, and there's a chocolate note in here, a cacao note um, up top that really makes this one stand out a little bit. Now, time to crack this one open. It is my scent of the day today. So I got the dry down here so smooth, uh, yet dark and mysterious. Um, that is a good way to, uh, with a lot of the Alto Parisis actually, but I'm going to remind me of the introduction. I'm just gonna spray the back of my hand here and remind me of it. Um, and exactly what I was saying about the dry down, this thing is dry, very woody. Um, so there's a lot of woods in this particular fragrance. And uh, of course, Galtiati likes to utilize his woods in his releases. And it is very much a dark scent. So made for fall and winter. Now the introduction of Bocanera uh, throws off a chocolate note that is 100% there, but isn't too gourmandy. Uh, nor to primary. She's there. She's a primary note, but at the same time, uh, really uh, shares the idea together with other notes, which doesn't make this fragrance, you know, too sweet, too gourmandish. Um, it really is right into Galtieri's wheelhouse, which is very uh, dark, um, not green, but it has some green tendencies more in the back end of this fragrance. And I'll, I'll let you know about that, but more woods and uh, of course some ambers and things like he, he likes to utilize those so it's surrounded if i have to say you know you got a, a chocolatey note it's surrounded by some gloom some darkness there's some dark woods they're very dry uh, the chocolate at times on my skin um right now it feels like a dry bitter unsweetened dark chocolate something that you would utilize in a recipe then it goes almost into a powdered chocolate it it, it definitely doesn't go too powdery I, I wouldn't classify this as powdery at all but it feels at times that it's an unsweetened dark chocolate and it has some thickness to it and then it kind of has some thinness to it and that's where this one goes into more of a granulated almost like a, a powdered a chocolate accord. Now the woody accord here is a mix of a synthetic oud, of course, that Galtieri likes to utilize, and sandalwood, uh, sandalwood, lots of that in here, and they are heavy secondary notes, and they, they share the spotlight with that chocolate note. The oud isn't very strong in this one, like some of Galtieri's work, as it's more 
I would have to say more dusty. Um, it has more of a dark woody aspect than anything in here than a skanky one. There's a little bit of sweetness in this fragrance and a pinch of vanilla, which comes with, of course, that sweetness. There's a tiny bit of a bite here from a pepper accord. Um, I know that the some people list a, a, a red chili pepper accord. I, I'm not getting that. I am getting a, a little bit of a bite, almost like a black pepper, or maybe like a pink pepper. I, I would have to obviously take some more time with it. And a little sprinkle of ginger here that really changes things up a little bit. It, it really seems like chocolate and ginger does not belong in this composition. Um, however they do. It's a, it's a weird uh, introduction, which I absolutely love from Galtieri. Kind of, you know, chocolate brings out gourmandish uh, fragrances and of course ginger's more into safer scents, uh, summer and spring scents. It's, that's the kind of note it's for. More prominent, at least it usually gets lost in the in the shuffle in, in darker scents like these, but uh, he really did a great job in the introduction of this scent. Now more into the dry down of Bocanera. The dry down show was more of a, almost a tobacco-like aspect that Black Afghano is known for. Um, and there's a patchouli aspect in here that I felt that I had in the back end with, uh, of course, that sandalwood as the backer and that synthetic oud aspect, giving its familiar backbone to this release. Many bring down the familiar backbone that uh, Gaultieri utilizes in uh, Black Afghano in some of these releases. They call him lazy, sloppy as a nose. I disagree. I seriously feel that the Alto Parisi line has its fans. And I would suggest if you're listening to those reviews or, or reading those reviews, they're saying that this is a sloppy release. It's, it's a poor oud note and things like that. Um, if you like Black Afghano, if you're a fan up to a major fan like myself, you'll enjoy this release among others from the Alto Parisi line. It gives you different twists, turns in the release, especially up top. And I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I am not going to throw Gaultieri's work under the bus in regards to that. Um, you know, I've seen a uh, master perfumier like Jean-Claude Anna utilize ISO E Super and he's a magician with it. And people call that the use of that being lazy. Um, so to me, uh, props, I absolutely love this one. I can't wait to put this one actually in the vault and test it more in this fall and winter seasons here in Canada. Can't wait to delve into this one a lot more. Now let's get into the revolver where I talk about seasons, day, night, versatility, and performance. Let's start it off with seasons. This one's a no brainer, fall and winter. It's a dark horse of a fragrance. So it's gonna obviously excel in the cooler months. Day or night, I feel like of course the this composition is more of a nighttime scent. Versatility, fairly average. I don't think there's much handcuffing you here. I don't think there's any note that really in the cold, I don't think there's anything that's going to make people uh, not like this release. Uh, performance wise, this is where these Alto Parisi's do shine. I felt like all of them have like this signature that Galtieri has and longevity is eight to 12 hours. Uh, again, with this limited run that I had with this release, great uh, longevity and projection was heavy. And this is something that you pay the big bucks for sometimes, especially with darker scents, scents that have some structure to them and scents that have some rough and tumble notes. Uh, you really want them to, to throw out sometimes. And uh, this is one of those, this is one of those brands that actually does that. I haven't met one yet that doesn't go, uh, that is fairly weak on my skin. This one does the job. So my final thoughts on Bocanetta. Overall, the color of the juice here, and I don't know if you guys can see that with my camera, you'll, you'll see a close-up of the juice. It's actually dark purple. It's not what I think of the scent. I think as far as color-wise, this thing's dark brown. As far the performance, um, this one hits all the check marks for a Galtieri scent. Um, I can't complain about the performance. I thoroughly enjoyed the chocolate note that went from unsweetened dark chocolate to almost a powdered chocolate. Having chocolate in a scent, not calling it gourmand on a fragrance review, it's been far and few between. I'm trying to think of a fragrance that has chocolate in its note that's very much pronounced. However, it's not a gourmand release. And that is a feat in its own. And Orto Parisi actually pulled it off as more of an oriental, a darker woody release than anything. So an excellent woody backdrop. And if you're familiar with Gaultieri's work, then you should uh, enjoy this one. 
too many purists uh, on the internet hate on this brand and uh, sometimes it's popular to follow trends uh, to hate certain things that everybody else is hating or what people say about a brand and for me I don't go on any bandwagon I trust this thing right here and that's what you guys should do even though I say what I say uh, you should trust your own nose and I came in knowing you know I bought this I got this knowing uh, what Galtieri can do, his strengths and his weaknesses as a perfumier from what I have in my collection. And of course, with the Nassimato branding and what I currently own in Alto Parisi. So I didn't come in expecting something that it's not. Um, I know what this nose can do and what his strengths are. And to me, with this release, kind of challenged himself with some notes that I see, but stayed in his lane. And I, and I enjoy that. I, I don't feel like he needs to go way off the wall and try something new when this kind of formula works, honestly. So now that I'm done with Bocanera, at least for now, it's going in the vault for full-fledged review. I need to test a lot more than what I tested today in the past few days. So it's time for you to hit us up in the comments below. What do you think of this release? I'm looking forward to your comments below and see what you guys think of Bocanera. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching.